Ken Trahan along with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNOAA.com. Well, the New Orleans Saints 2014 season is over. They finished up 7-9, and rallied to beat Tampa Bay on the road 23-20, to kind of a nondescript game and effort, really nothing to be encouraged about Lenny to be honest with you but they did win the game so give them credit for that and they cost themselves what five draft spots in the process they're about yeah but in eighth ninth something like that and now they will pick on lucky 13th <laughs> you know let's see what that you know we got four months to break down what the 13th pick in the draft will bring you but uh as it you know as it were Sunday felt more like a loss than it did a win. It's not because not because of the five spots in the draft that you might have gained, but just just the effort itself. And I mean, you know, here it is, you know, watching this one on TV and until reading things afterwards, I really didn't realize that Tampa had pulled as many guys yeah. as they pulled in the second half. Mm-hmm. You didn't hear mention about it on the broadcast. The only thing you heard about was uh, was Vincent Jackson's injury, and really not a lot of talk about Mike Evans not playing the second half. I and mean, the one thing that was kind of strange is Tampa Bay did not throw a pass in the second half until seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. They were running the ball. Was, part of that was the Saints offense was keeping them off the field and the Saints defense was getting three and outs, but they were they were trying to run the football. And maybe that was why, because they didn't have wide receivers out there to throw it to. They got those two guys over a thousand yards on the first two plays of the game and we didn't see much of them after that. Uh, but it's just, it, just a strange feeling game and not one Thankfully, not one that we've really had to experience uh, following the New Orleans Saints for quite a while. Every game has meant something. This is the first time in a very long time that you've watched a game the two teams were playing that didn't mean anything. Well, credit the Saints. They kept playing. I think this was more a result of what Tampa Bay did as compared to what the Saints did. They didn't play players. And to only throw two passes in the second half after Evans pretty much had his way in the first half was remarkable. So a lot of people will question whether the Buccaneers were actually playing to win or playing to win the number one pick. And that conjecture is going to continue. But the bottom line is it's all about who wins and loses. Saints won the game. They move on. So now, Lenny, it turns to what to do in the offseason. And I suspect many changes are going to occur. We've already had one coaching change, Wesley McGriff leaving. But you've got player personnel that – of course, is going to be decided by Coach Payton, Mickey Loomis. Salary cap will determine some of that. I think you'll see players gone. I think you'll see restructuring. And I think you'll see one or two more changes on the coaching staff. I think we're we're far from seeing what is done here. And, you know, the big thing that you bring up there is the cap. It, you've got to have room if you're going to make some moves and going to try to, you know, inject some new life into this team, so to speak. You've got to have room under the cap to be able to do it. Now, if anyone manages the cap better than Mickey Loomis in the NFL, I don't know who it is. He is a master at trying to manage that. But a lot of that has been, you know, kind of building things for the present and, you know, not worry about the future so much and backloading contracts. And sooner or later, you, you have to pay the piper on these things. And, you know, a lot of that is starting to, to come to fruition with the Breeze contract and will in the next year or two with some of the other deals like the Bird deal and the Gillette deal. And you know, we'll see how those things all play themselves out. But as you look at some salary cap numbers that are that are on the hook as they stand right now for 2015, there have got to be some changes made in some of how these deals are done. Will Drew Brees sign something along the lines of what Tom Brady did? recently in that um you know that that three-year 27 million dollar extension of what he had will will he provide a hometown discount to allow for a more cap friendly situation uh that will be one of the questions that will certainly get answered in, in terms of you know what they think of some of these guys performance as it relates to a contract i i think you could see some moves some surprising moves but again this is day one of the offseason a long way to go before we get to all of those things happening the New Orleans Pelicans coming off of a loss at Chicago to the Bulls, a competitive game, but they fell. Our home on Tuesday night against the Phoenix Suns, another contender in the West, and these are the kind of games they've got to win, Lenny, at home against a team you're going to have to beat if you want to have a chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, that's exactly the case, and this has been an inconsistent Pelicans team. Win one night, lose the next. Win one night, lose the next. Have not been able to put together – a good or a bad streak of more than two games really in the month of December. they got two more chances to get something started here in December. Tuesday night at home against Phoenix, and then a back-to-back, they go to San Antonio for a New Year's Eve game. And uh, that'll be you know, an, an interesting two-game test there. Uh, again, uh, based on what we've seen, 
you figure a split is going to happen there based on uh, based simply on past performance in, in recent times, if you will. So uh, a good performance on Friday night against the Spurs, uh, a not so good performance on Saturday night in Chicago, though Anthony Davis was outstanding in both games. Yeah, he was, as is typically the case, and they'll need him to continue to play that way to have a chance in the Western Conference. Of course, the college bowl season continuing, LSU and Notre Dame Tuesday afternoon in Nashville. Weather forecast has gotten a little bit better than the initial prognostication. Yeah, we heard snow and freezing rain at first. Uh, I think the the precipitation is out of the forecast, but it's still going to be a little chilly in Nashville. And look, both of these teams, I think, want to try to run the football. Uh, you know, it could be a fast game in that regard. And uh, you know, I think just based on what you saw in the month of November, you have to give LSU a little bit of an edge in this game. Although it's certainly, on paper, based on brand names, a very attractive matchup. Well, it's always about who wants to play. It's about one, two in these situations, and we'll find out about that. But certainly based on the way Notre Dame collapsed down the stretch, you've got to like LSU's chances in this game. Of course, the All-State Sugar Bowl coming up on New Year's night, and Alabama and Ohio State have been here for a couple of days now. Getting ready. Alabama, it's all about redemption. They've laid two eggs in New Orleans in recent years in games that so-called didn't matter. Others would take issue with that. This one matters, though. And Ohio State's defense has kept them afloat. Really good job by Urban Meyer. But obviously, with a third-team quarterback, it's going to be tough. It is, and you, you can imagine what Nick Saban and Kirby Smart are going to come up with. And they probably feel like... Hey, you know what what happened against Auburn in the regular season finale? Um, you know before the before the championship game went over Missouri, uh, that still probably stings a little bit to them. And in trying to to certainly uh, you know show the nation what this team is all about, and yeah, you know, obviously it's a, a totally different scenario this year. The first year of the college football playoff will be an intriguing uh, New Year's late afternoon and evening with Oregon, Florida State in the Rose Bowl, and then Alabama, Ohio State in the All State Sugar Bowl. Uh, to set things up for uh, a national championship game 11 days later at Jerry World. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll see. Of course, we'll be talking about it on Sports Noah TV Monday night. 6 p.m. WHNO starts your sports week right here. And uh, on WHNO, the sports block every Monday through Friday, 5.30 to 7, where you get all the all the best and the most local sports anywhere in New Orleans. He's Lenny Van Gilder. I'm Ken Trahan. That's our First NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNOAA.com. Thanks, Lenny, and have a great week. See you later this week. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you as well and to you. I'm Ken Trahan. God bless you one and all. Have a great week.